Humans always dream about the idea of robots, but can we humanize technology? In our society, mental problems among children are on the rise. And Embodied, a California company, created Moxie, a companion robot to help child mental well-being by developing their social, emotional, and cognitive skills. Today, I'm excited to talk and welcome Eve Bihar, founder and CEO of Fuse Project, the studio that helps Embodied to humanize their technologies. Uh, I lost you for a few seconds, but now you are back. Okay, let me try. Let me try. Let, let me try something else. Let me uh, switch to a different. Uh, okay. A different connection. You was telling me about your story about you. Um, you come from Switzerland, from yeah. the school design in Switzerland. You move in California. Yeah. Yeah. So I I started in design really, um, or I started by choosing that I wanted to be a designer. Um, when I grew up in uh, Lausanne in Switzerland and um, at, at the age of about 14, 15, I started making things. Uh, it was the punk era, so uh, I made clothing, I made furniture, um, I spray painted things and um, you know the, the, the beautiful thing about the punk era is that it was really a maker's movement. You mm -hmm. were, you know, you didn't have to be an expert to to make things. You could just go ahead and, and modify or build things yourself. So that's really when, when I started. I went to school after that, and um, both in Switzerland and in the US. And uh, when I finished my, my studies in, um, at the Art Center College of Design, I moved to uh, San Francisco. That's great. And I'm assuming it's a very far, I mean, in the past year, uh, I was uh, looking at your uh, profile and the website on the Fuse project. I mean, you work in such amazing, remarkable, and great project like a computer for kids, a wearable device, a smart objects. I mean, it's very far away from where did you start? Have you never expected to finish in this kind of environment? No, I didn't expect it at all, and it's been um, it's been truly a, an incredible adventure because as a designer. You know, for me, when I moved to San Francisco uh, and to the Bay Area, technology just became a tool, just another another tool in the designer's toolbox to uh, create new experiences. And um, uh, but you know, after after working for different firms, after working, I, I used to be a consultant. I you know, when I worked at Lunar Design, Frog Design, I worked with Apple. And, and you know many of the you like Packard and many of the other um, um, kind of pioneers of Silicon Valley and you know I started to really learn about how to integrate technology to deliver something that um, that is new and different so I've also worked on furniture obviously with Herman Miller but there's and, and others but there's always sort of an element of innovation of you know the possibilities of a new technology, a new material, and eventually a new way to think of, of, of things. Yeah, that's great. And especially, I believe, the, this kind of continuing moving out of the comfort zone and learning something new, a new challenge, I believe is very inspiring for everyone, especially for you. And talking it about- was very, it, it was, it was, um, excuse me. It was very inspiring for me when I first moved to, um, to Northern California, to San Francisco, um, the openness, you know, the, mm -hmm. the notion that anybody could arrive and disrupt the field that they're in, this, the, disrupt the traditional notion of this experience or that experience, um, that was very liberating, you know, for, for my brain, for my European brain, you know, who was more used to sort of uh, following certain, okay. certain, um, formats you know before you know before before being creative that's great and talking about disruption you your studio uh, working with a company called embody just work an amazing new kind of disruptive kind of product moxie mm -hmm. a sort of a companion robot to helping children to develop social emotional and cognitive skill uh, yeah. before talk about moxie in itself i'm curious about how this kind of collaboration work between a studio like Kiara and a technology company like Embodied? Yeah, so in the last few years, I've been very lucky because 
Um, I'm interested in technology, but I'm really interested in technology that that really helps people, supports people at different stages of life, not just the comfortable stage of life, which mm -hmm. tends to be the middle of life. Uh, and this is why we have so many gadgets, um, but really at the, the, the stage of life, whether it's, um, you know, being a new parent, um, being, uh, being old, a, the aging, um, or being, you know, sick or having certain needs, educational needs. And so, you know, the, the project immediately kind of fit within this notion of, you know, a humanistic way to apply technology. So Moxie is really originally was built, you know, for autistic children and, mm. and children, you know, uh, on the, on a, on the, on the varying scale of autism and the spectrum. Um, but it, it very quickly became clear that, um, the way Moxie approaches dialogue and learning and conversation uh, really works for all children that all children are able to um to to really connect uh you know emotionally uh with moxie so uh that was very very compelling and um, made it sort of an obvious uh, reason for me to work you know in this area uh, because i had worked on the aging i had worked on the babies you know with the snoo aging with leq and Superflex, um, and now now there was an opportunity to really make a difference in in these kids' lives. That's great, fantastic, and I, I'm assuming I mean the collaboration is in this kind of project normally is not something very easy because the area overlapping between the expertise and the the things you are working on with actually Never. what they embodied actually do, it's it's very uh, connected, no. Yeah, it's very connected, and um, I was lucky to have worked with the CEO, Pardo Pirjan. Previously, we had built a robot, um, a, a robot company, uh, more of the cleaning type of, types hey. of robots, which was eventually uh, purchased by iRobot um, in uh, in uh, in Boston. Um, and so, when he, you know, kind of left the company after after quite a few years, uh, he came back and he said, "I have this." this new endeavor um, where robotics and AI are coming together. He put together an incredible team of, of uh, specialists in autism in robotics and learning. Um, and, um, and so I really benefited from, from their expertise um, and, uh, and their experience in, in, um, in the pro in, in, in when we started the project. That's great. How long t took actually developing the idea of Moxie? from the initial concept to actually, <laughs> I know now the product is still not available. You can actually yeah. request a demo, but yeah. it was a kind of long, long project or something like you already have some kind of clear idea how to do things. No, I think, I think the projects, you know, took three to four years. Um, I've, you know, I've collaborated with, um, uh, embodied probably for two and a half years at least. Um, and, you know, when you talk about how the, the technology and the needs for that connection to be established, mm -hmm. um, you know, were actually fundamental to uh, the design solution that we eventually came to. And the design solution is that, you know, in order for uh, kids to connect, um, uh, especially kids that are on the spectrum, the size of the eyes needed to be much bigger and they need to be very expressive. Um, and then the hands that move and do gestures are also very important. And, um, you know, but in order to have large expressive eyes, if you go into mechanical design of eyes that, that close and open and change shapes, it's nearly impossible. It looks, it doesn't look real. It looks a little bit creepy. So we, we, with the team at Embodied, we really worked on projection of an image inside the head of Moxie. And this is really what made, um, you know, such a, you know, what made, what makes Moxie so unique is the fact that it has, you know, thousands and thousands of facial expressions that look natural, that are fluid. Um, it is like watching a, a movie of, a robot, but actually it's there in front of you. The movie is just inside the head being projected. 
uh, and the rest of the body acts in ways that are um, similar to the expression on the face. Yeah, you know, whether it's an expression of laughter, whether it's an expression of impatience, whether it's an expression Probably. of sadness, all those expressions really come across through both the projection and the body language. And probably it's the, one of the most important things because we know we have a thousand different uh, kind of expression or represent different kind of feeling. And yeah. as you say, kids are reacting completely different way from the adults and that can be a great way to create a connection. But uh, just because some people maybe have no idea why product like this one is so important, I was reading about some insight about, in general, one child every five children suffer about stress or some kind of mental disorder today in the world. And often people don't know about that. In some cases, because there's a very lack of understanding of this kind of things or provider and health uh, system actually make barrier about understanding this. And now, with the yeah. pandemic we experienced this year, the number of kids suffering stress has increased incredibly. Yeah. What actually Moxie do at this point? What kind of role play in this kind of context for understanding the kids? So Moxie really is not a teacher, not an, not an adult that gives you instructions. It's really a one-on-one -on -one way for the child to dialogue. And from that standpoint, it doesn't create pressure to learn or pressure to act in a certain way. It just goes into the commonality that uh, Moxie and the child have and their common interest and passion and the things that make uh, them laugh and the things that make them uh, that that feel you know that feel them connected to each other and so you know it, it isn't um, it is actually very uh, soothing and confident build confidence building for the child um, and because that connection with um, with an equal somebody who who uh, is 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 often hard to create for for children, especially children um, with learning disorders or uh, children with um, with autism. And so, um, the most important part is to create that connection, so that they can, um, so that the child can feel empathy, so that the child can feel um, uh, it has, um, you know, a friend. Um, you know, even though it's a robot. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. And I think it's so, so much important, actually. I, um, I always think when I, when I saw the first time Moxie and the idea behind the product, I immediately think that it was a fantastic example of what I call well, technologies for well-being. Because I think mm -hmm. now the well-being is so much important. But at the same time, uh, I appreciate this, the project because I don't think we can relay our well-being only to the technology. We need to actually embrace more people. And correct me if, if uh, I'm wrong, but I think Moxie actually create a, a system for let the parents or uh, other people to participate in monitoring what's happening to the kids and how the conversation involved, correct? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, the, the um, you know, the, the parents are, um, you know, can be present or the parents can be observers. And, you know, the important thing with, with, with the AI is the fact that the robot continually learns about the child and can, you know, and starts to relate in multiple ways and lots of different facets, you know, to, um, to the child. So whether it's, you know, the child's favorite books or music or dance movements or, um, um, you know, or the stories uh, or the jokes that the child likes. So there's a lot of um, the AI is a, is a, has a very um, powerful way to kind of build on, the, on that. The other thing that's important is this is not something like the television or the computer, mm -hmm. you know, to put your kids in front of for, you know, hours and hours on end. Yeah. Um, it, it will work with the child for about an hour. And then uh, it will say, I need to go to sleep now. You know, I see you tomorrow. Um, so it isn't, um, you know, it isn't something that is permanently there, you know, as a distraction from the other things that are important, which is, you know, your parents and your siblings. That's, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure that the, the entire process to design a solution like this one was not actually a linear process. 
you said before now the the expression the face you recognize in your class was the most important things how was the journey to design marketing and what have been the things you actually you discover or actually you learn during this kind of process sure yeah i mean with moxie what we needed to do is um and the big question was how you know how much can we um can we emote you know how much can the product um do you know to for expression physical and facial expressions but with as little as possible uh complexity you know because when we first started the project moxie had you know uh, articulated arms it had mm -hmm. like fingers that opened you know it it was much more complex and um as you can see in the video there um its expressions its body movements the way it moves sideways forwards uh, the way it, it reaches out with the hand the eyes um that's a lot but we actually doing a lot with very little there's only um a, a couple of motor motorized areas in the neck and in the body that create this movement there's only a couple of um uh, uh motors that move the um, you know that move the the arms and so we actually simplify dramatically uh with again the goal of how much can we express with as little um technology as possible um and that's obviously for cost reasons and 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 uh, simplicity of development you know it has to connect with the children it doesn't have to impress hmm. me even though it is very impressive it, it doesn't have to sort of dance and do all these other things that very expensive expensive robots do it just have to it, it just has to create through emotions and movement um expressiveness it has to create um that uh, that connection with the child that's great well, definitely compliment because I, I love the project itself. I I, I think you. you really made a great, great uh, uh, solution design. Um, in fact, I feel like you know, Moxie, it's uh, probably a very an, an excellent example of uh, kind of sort of multidisciplinary work because it is a physical object, is a software, is a service, is an ecosystem of uh, different kind of tools. And I feel like uh, design today more and more is try to build this kind of bridge between technology, physical object, data, and learn. Um, every design studio become to become less an assembler of craft and makers and more like, I don't know, some kind of idea accelerator. I mean, how you how you identify what's happening to the design space right now? Well, so the vision for Fuse Project from 20 years ago was uh, really embedded in the name. So Fuse is about fusing different disciplines of design at the service of an idea, hopefully a big idea. And there's so many important 21st century ideas that, uh, that we should work on, um, you know, environmental, sustainability, um, uh, equity, um, you know, and, and, and the digital divide, how technology can sort of reach everyone. These are all important big ideas that um that really you need multiple disciplines to solve i mean of course with moxie there's an incredible uh group of uh scientists mm -hmm. and technologists that work there um, but there's user experiences there's industrial design there is um you know strategy and brand and iconography um you know uh user you know UX and UI, all those things um, really sort of contribute and build value in such a multifaceted uh, uh, project and a multi-talent uh, type of project. Um, you know, so for me, it's 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 clear that um, in order to innovate, um, uh, not only we have to collaborate with others, but we have to bring a varied point of view that comes from these different um, these different expertises that all live under one roof. Yeah, definitely I agree with you. And also, as you say, the ability to connect and non-create silos between all these expertise is so much important. And yes. I have a last question for you. We talk about how to make the right choice and the right product. For the right product, do you think every designer and every company 
who are approaching kind of new product or solution design should start adding the well being produced from what mm -hmm. they do as a KPI and not just be focused on, okay, what kind of problem we solve, what kind of need do we support? Because I feel no. this product is exactly do that. It's thinking about how you can deliver valuable well-being to all the people who are using it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I think well-being is um, something that I've worked on um, on multiple projects, and recently with Form Life, for example, which is not about just fitness, but it's also uh, mental health um, and mental well-being. I think. I think you really need people who are not technologists per se, uh, who know technology and know how to use it, but people who are humanists to be at the onset of these projects. And those values that a humanist have that uh, really um, are embedded in everything that the company does, the product, the experience, the service, um, you know, how uh, the commercial side, uh, and it's certainly something that I've experienced, you know, with the happiest baby snoo, for example, um, you know, the CEO of the happiest baby snoo uh, is he's not a technologist, you know, he's, um, you know, he's dedicated his life to making the life of parents and babies, you know, better and safer. Um, and so you have a pediatrician as the head of a, of a you know, technology application company. Um, in the case of uh, Moxie, you have, you know, someone who, um, you know, who has sort of deep roots um, in, in, in a humanistic concept, you know, before you assemble all the technology to, to, to put it together. So, you know, for me, technology, as I said, is, is, is just a tool. When, we, when, when there's too much technology consideration and not enough human technology consideration, when we end up with a kind of distract distracting, uh, interrupting, um, you know, world that we live in, especially in our homes these days, right? Technology tends to interrupt, to create a distance between us and others. Um, and um, I, think, I think we need to really conceive it from the beginning uh, with the kind of values that, um, that we think are um, positive values for all human beings. Great advice. Okay, we are on the end. Okay. Ivan, thank you very much for your time today. It was such a pleasure talking with you. Pleasure to talking with you, Mirko. Thank you.